complete story. Hey, everybody, what's up? I'm Adam Papagan, and welcome to another episode of There's a Place, the ASMR talk show, the show that feels good to hear. I am your host, Adam Papagan. Done another special episode, doing a lot of those, you know, two years in. A lot of special episodes. Oh, hey, what's up, Karen? You're not Mike. You gotta go. Um, Karen Centervold is here, everyone. Uh, but you go talk to Nolan about a mic. That should give you some idea of uh, what's happening. I just wanted to talk briefly at the top of the show. Just an observation. Something that needs to happen. So, you know, uh, men's clothing. You know, jeans are good, t-shirt, collared shirt like this, plaid, like there's there's staples, there's basic stuff, never goes out of style. But when you want something like shorts or swim trunks or oh hey, what's up Karen? What's happening is You wanna just What is going on is that just, we have a okay. visitor. Okay, we're just gonna we're gonna jump right into it? Yes, we are. Alright. And this visitor is famous. Now, Karen, well, just before... Yes. Remember we talked about this before the show, you said yes. that you weren't going to introduce it first. Or, Do you want me to introduce it or what? I, you know, I guess... You, go ahead. You're right. It's unprofessional. You're right. I'm sorry. All hail Satan, the Prince of Darkness! Woo! Okay, well... Hail Satan! Hail Satan! The Prince of Darkness! Hello. Hey, what's up, Satan? Hey, how's it going? Oh, it's going pretty good. Cool, so you're gonna split, Karen? Good, okay. Well, good to see you, Satan. Thanks for um, coming on the show. Karen told me that um, she, she had a, a guest for me in mind that I would really like, who um, was an interesting guy, had a lot of knowledge. And uh, as you know, because we're friends, making a, a commitment like that with Karen Centerfold really is a deal with the devil. So I've, it, it actually came to fruition this time. So welcome to the show. So Satan, um, you know, I'm familiar with your work from um, literature, you know, the Bible and stuff like that. But I'm also a fan of your work at Venice Beach. I think I've seen you down there. Play around with tourists and stuff. Okay. Is it, oh, and then have the mic a little closer to your mouth, the uh, microphone. Yeah, I play around with the tourists a little bit. Do, do tourists like to see Satan when they come to Los Angeles? Mm -hmm. They have mixed emotions, so it's funny to watch them because they want to approach you, but they're not sure, can they, without their friend's permission. A lot of people are afraid to be individual. It frightens them to think out of the box. Why do you think that is? Oh, uh, it's sheeple. Sheeple. Oh, yeah, I've heard that term yeah, before. They're yeah, they're not really thinking for themselves without their friend's permission. So they're afraid to be separate from that. Or, you know, criticism scares them. Are the friends usually accepting? Usually, mm, they're not. They just want them to go through changes and be accepted, but more than likely, they never will be. So when they're looking for that friend's approval, what they're maybe more looking for is like a disapproval. It's false energy. It's false so, energy. Yeah. So what's that? What's that? It's like chasing energy around, draining yourself, living other people's dreams instead of your own. Why do you think people do that? Um, so they're living just living their own dreams. From the very very early age, when they're very small to when they become adults, they're just programmed like a microwave. You just hit the buttons and they're head and tell them what to do and they go do it. Well, thanks for coming sure. to the show. <laughs> how did you get involved with the whole Satan thing, the evil mm. and the... It's pretty funny, actually. Uh, I was recycling cans at Walmart and I got mistaken for somebody who was 5'8". I'm nowhere near that height. This old lady was running around in a parking lot and said, I tried a purse snatcher. And this is before I started performing and whatnot. So I changed my whole look after that. Because you don't want to get blamed for something if you didn't do it. Yeah. So after you get you know handcuffed at Walmart and questioned for about a good hour or so about some lady who has bad vision lined three guys up 
and she can't figure out which two it is, you're not gonna wanna relive that. So you just figure, grow your horns and enjoy life. Over some cans at Walmart? Um, yeah, they have a recycling center, so they make you wait in line. No, no, I've been to a recycling yeah. center, but it's just to change your whole persona. Oh, yeah, it was like that before. Where I was living, sister-in-law was, um, what you would say, religious spaz, and didn't like me from the get-go, so I had to cut loose, get away from them, and live my life. So it's kind of one of these instances where you know, you were dealt one life that didn't really kind of fit. So you switch over. And you, yeah, exactly. You made the conscious decision, just like enough of this. Oh yeah, don't try to live for other people. Live uh, the way you like doing it. And has that worked out? Do you like living your own way? Oh yeah, versus trying to operate under somebody else's uh, time schedule. Because we're all on unlimited time. Nobody knows when their time's going to run out. Right. You never know when the reaper sickle. Yeah, I got ran over by a preacher's son, so I know. By a preacher's son? Oh, yeah. Was that relevant to the running over? Mm, he tried to cut through a light before it changed. And when you have the give to go, instead of slowing down, this kid speed it up. And they thought I was dead. So I'm in the back seat like weekend at Barney's, and they're trying to figure out where to throw my body, except they didn't know I was still awake in the back seat. So, so you, I wake up and I'm like, take me to the hospital. Or they're bugging out like, oh shit, he's not dead, he's alive. <laughs> so wait, you could hear them like... Only plotting and planning where to throw you. Ooh. Yeah, that didn't sound creepy. How did that feel? That was, knowing this was a preacher's son, it was creepy because I'm thinking, oh yeah, I'm gonna go to the hospital and get some help. <clears throat> Wrong. So wait, you knew the guy? No, total stranger. How'd you figure out he's a preacher's son? Found out later... After um, I was started waking up and snapping out of the haze, I'm like, hey, young kid, you're 20 something. What you're doing is illegal. It's called kidnapping. So you need to take somebody to the hospital before they, you know, something bad happens. So, so I ended up going and long, crazy story. But yeah. Well, no, tell them. Changed we got time the, to the entire oh. history. What's up? Okay. Um, well, Satan's minion, or Karen, the real Satan's minion, um, asked me to start uh, asking you some of the questions she's prepared. So Satan, if you could just bear with me. Um, I was enjoying our conversation, yeah. just, just so everyone knows, you know, but we'll just, for Karen, so. Um, you hold a candlelight ceremony that draws 75 of your worshipers in Woodland Hills, and everyone bows down when you walk on stage and they hold up candles, and then you walk on stage to a bed, and you have sex with a cute 18-year-old blonde high school grad. Look at you graduated. And you can make money. How long has it been going on when women pay you anywhere from 30 to $1,000 to get you in a photo with them on Venice Beach Boardwalk at some of the Sunset Boulevard rock clubs? Did you ever have any kind of nine to five job? So I'm not really sure if that was a question, but if you had any thoughts on any of that say stuff. I that's probably been going on as long as preachers have been grabbing on kids. Pretty long time, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, it kind of goes hand in hand. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Hand in something else. Yeah. So you, what was, the, what was that question? Um, yeah, you, are there a lot of Satanists in Woodland Hills? Oh yeah, there's like over a good old number, probably thousand here or there. A thousand Satanists in Woodland oh, Hills? Yeah. You'll never see them coming. Is it like kind of like a kind of like PTA, like yeah, Elks like Club vibe? Yeah, school thingy. Yeah, one of them little dealio bobs. Like a social kind of yeah. like a way to meet people. We listen and... to the Rolling Stones, Hope You Guess My Name song. That's it? Oh, yeah, but we got a couple songs too that we of all the songs about Satan, it seems like you guys could dig a little. The other ones are kind of boring that they play on the radio. They the, can only play certain ones because they'll get yanked off the air for playing it. Songs that are too satanic. Oh, yeah. They don't want nobody to hear that one. Yeah. Well, like, you know, you're the devil and all. What satanic music do you like? like oh, I got a variety of Okay, music. yeah. I'm into thrash metal. Okay, you think that they kind of capture the satanic mm -hmm. vibe the best? I would say... It's more of an outlet. The only thing that probably captures that vibe is people's behavior. 
you know, they're the pickers and choosers of their destiny. The majority of them choose to be miserable, so you just leave them as be. So that's interesting you say that because there's kind of two, uh, as far as I know, kind of two thoughts on Satanism. There's the Christian view where like Satan is evil, but then there's the Anton LaVey Satanist school where Satanism is basically just like, do what you want, but don't hurt anybody. Is that, I don't know, am I getting that well, kind of right? The borderline of that, yeah. The, the Holy Roller style is like, from day one when you're a little kid, if you don't do what you're told, you're gonna to get drowned in some water and it's called baptizing. And also, if you don't stop, drop, and roll, and they get their Holy Ghost, then you're gonna get punished in some other form, shape, or way when you get home as a child. You know it, because from what age till she hit an adult, did she start chasing that energy around? Because it's all she's familiar with. So half of California is dysfunctional because they're chasing that around. They're in love with it and don't know any better. But then what about the other half? Oh no, the other half is a little more interesting because they know what's going on. How do, how do people find out what's going on? I feel like I know what's going on, but I probably don't know what's going on. Mm, you have to dig within yourself to find that answer. Mm, you have to study yourself more than anybody else. A lot of people don't do that, they don't study themselves. Have you studied yourself? Oh yeah. <laughs> what have you found? A lot of stuff. Yeah. Good or bad? Or well, it's a combination. It's kind of like a combination mix. Uh, like a, what do you call it? Like a rock star or a Red Bull drink? Like a mixed drink. Yeah. It's like a mixed drink of energy and good old stuff. But you can make, using that analogy, just I like to follow analogies yeah. um, of like uh, alcohol and like uh, energy drink. Oh, don't do you that. You could argue, <laughs> what? <laughs> don't, I've seen that and it doesn't come out well. Oh, okay, that's not <laughs> right. I've seen that at the beach and it's not a good at, ending. At the beach. Yeah. You must see some wild stuff down oh, at this well, beach. You see more than you can basically tell anybody about because most of the tourists just travel in tunnel vision. They mm -hmm. don't look around. They're usually looking at their phone, texting, looking at the floor, or they're on a Bluetooth and they're not surveillance in their surrounding. So, but predators are watching them, so they don't know that. So they always have to be alert. So, have you seen people get preyed upon at any oh, speech? Yeah. Like how? How? Like what? Kind um, of ways? Pickpocketed, basic shoulder bump where they run across somebody and the other person snags their purse or their wallet. That's why if you do go down there, just bring a bag of dirty laundry. So if they try to steal it, they're going to be kind of upset because all they're going to have is smelly clothes. Yeah, smelly clothes with holes in them. Might not even they make them. sure they're grody and nobody wants them. <laughs> when you so you're watching all these tourists go by and you know that the atmosphere is this pickpocket kind of atmosphere, can you spot someone who's like, oh, they're going to get pickpocketed? Usually, people kind of set themselves up because the smartest thing to do is never tell anybody what you're carrying. A lot of people don't. They think it's macho to blurt out how much money they make, and that's a no-no in the alley. Because you don't know whose ears are listening. Mm -hmm. And if they're desperate, they're gonna go after you. You don't wanna be a target. So a mark that's like a type, you would you think? Like you can, can you like, as somebody who's not even a private, can you pick out a mark? Like do you, you know? Would know. You know, you know the marks. They move, their body language gives them away. Mm. After you live in the alley for a year or so, or maybe longer, you'll know real fast. The alley? Yeah. What's, what's the alley? The alley. <laughs> Is that a satanic thing, or do you it's mean like, like a literal... A, you know, Welcome to the Jungle, Guns yeah. and Roses song. Yeah, do a remix. Welcome yeah. to the alley. There's like a literal alley in Venice uh, Beach? Yeah, it's, it's Park Avenue. <laughs> okay, there's a street, Park Avenue. On the other side of it, yeah. there's an alley. Venice has nothing but alleys, but there's only like one or two that you can put, if you're homeless, that you can lay in sort of safe and hope nobody snatches your blankets, your pillows, or your belongings. But a lot of tourists don't know that. They think they can sleep in the sand, and that's very dangerous because you'll get ran over out there. And it's illegal. You can't lay out in the sand. Get your stuff snagged. Mm. Oh, Karen's emotioning to me. I think that sign is upside down, Karen, but I think she wanted me to ask you the next question. Sure. So here we go. Uh, this is uh, give 
to Caesar was for Caesar and God to God or whatever. But, you know, so it's, it, the, the negative aspects of religion well, are all the, out the there. The funny but, part is, mm -hmm. oh, is if, Mike, you, if you step yeah. out of the building to pray, mm -hmm. that's considered schizophrenia if you don't put a title or a name to it. But they put the letter G in front, which is God, but if you spell it backwards, it's dog. But if you debate that with anybody who's religious, then they become a gangbanger. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Because they get their necklace, which is a cross. They turn it around their back, and they're ready to be violent with you the minute you disagree. They roll up like a serpent or a snake, and they strike you verbally. Yeah. And they usually travel in a rat pack. And without their you know, rat pack buddies, boys and girls, they're not that strong. They're actually afraid, but they try to use gold page rage, which is a Bible, to run around attacking people that are different. Because the majority of them have fetishes and whatnot, but they blame it on me because they want to yeah. have a scapegoat. If, if, you know, if I were an evil entity, if I were evil, if it were me like trying to get evil out into the world, I would go to churches first because, hey, these are the most susceptible people to believing oh, yeah. things, to be swayed. Confessing left and right, yeah. and telling you what's wrong, and then you can just sit there and pretend you care and do whatever you want if you're hiding behind a minister robe. Yeah. yeah. It seems like the easiest thing in the world if you're evil. They're reptilian. They're like them aliens with the reptile eyes. You go up and down like them characters on V. Oh, yeah. And as soon I as know. they get what they want out of you, they just uh, keep on snatching your dollars. Well, then I'll ask you, Satan. Is there anything good about religion? Is there anything no, good that can come out of it? All of it's control. It's control from the very beginning to the end. If you ever looked at uh, Mary, I guess she wasn't a virgin because she got knocked up in that hut. Now they left that part out and they wonder who the baby's father is. But if you question mark it, then watch out. One more time, here comes another bouncer from a church ready to come at you because you disagree on their belief system. But what if someone got into the church and they really did just follow like all the value all the stuff all but like I tried that when i was 20 it didn't go right it didn't go <laughs> well, yes, what I happened found out they were a cult you were in a cult <laughs> i had no clue i was like mm, 1994 i must have been about barely 21 and they use hot women to get you in the building which cult was this uh first um it was a church called uh it's a Baptist gig. Because there's a lot of these like yeah, little like right Christian they cults. Was, they were up above a police station was below them, so if anybody got out of hand, they called the cops on you. Oh. And I was collecting cans and donating plasma just to eat. And they were like, "Don't worry, we'll feed you. You come in and let us yell at you more or less, but it's preaching." And they'll give you this cartoon muffin from McDonald's. You'll get some Sprite, which is diet in a little can. And you think you're going to get some uh, help, but they just yell at you for few hours and get you to repeat what they just said but it doesn't end they keep repeating it until you agree then they show up like pop-up they pop up on your doorstep they give you a ride home and you're wondering like what's this dude doing at my doorstep at 8 a.m he's going to drive you there for morning service then he's going to drive you back for evening service they want to get you on a schedule so they can control you yes and if you disagree then that's when you become the enemy they start showing up and harassing you and most of them used to be like ex-mafia dudes, ex-gangbangers, ex-shooters. You name it, they did it. They even confessed it, and that's why they call it confession, because they can hide behind the cross. So once I found out it was a cult, it's like, <clears throat> get out of there, took off. How'd you figure out it was a cult? Oh, they got busted on Channel 10. <laughs> yeah, Channel 10 exposed them for uh, cultish activity. And you're like, hey, I worship there. I used to be in that whatever, and... I left on the same day that the pastor wanted me to get into a fist fight with him. The same day, he, yeah, I, I caught mm -hmm. this girl giving a kid a lap dance, dancing dirty in the prayer room. What? Yeah, she was like about 12 and the young kid had a transformer in his hand and had his first diving board between his legs and he got pissed because I killed his action. So the pastor's breathing at me looking like he wanted to get into it, not knowing I trained for boxing at that age. Almost got to part where you go in the ring. So me and the pastor are squaring off in the hallway. I'm getting ready to hit him with a nice hook and throw him over the railing. Only reason I didn't, police station right below. And how were you going to hide out with a bag of cans 
and your plasma is kind of gone, you're low on blood, yeah. and the energy zapped. <laughs> and everybody that invited me there were the same ones that were going to jump on you like a hellhound, kind of like pit bull Christians. And yeah. Get up on the fence and start barking at you and biting. So they're ready to bite your head off. In the name of Father, his name was Pastor Fisher. Now it just dawned upon me. Yeah. And he, this dude worked at a morgue, come to find out. That's why I had that creepy look to him. Mm -hmm. So I stepped back and watched him, and everybody that was in the building ran forward to get me out because they wanted to see if me and him were really going to get into this fight. Whatever happened with this group? Uh, they winded up getting closed, but I looked at their map, uh -huh. and they were all over the United States. Mm. Literally, all, you know, like those little red pins, and they're looking yep. for the mm -hmm. Hulk. And, and they got 10 guys here, 10 guys yeah, there. Yeah, they got those little red, yeah. what you call it, those little pins up there. Yeah, the pins, yeah. They, they had a whole thing of that over California. Oh. Uh, literally, just took over the whole area. Well, you've convinced me. I so won't I'm like, you. Mm, yeah, get out of there. <laughs> well, Karen is doing... Um, uh, skywriting signals to get me to ask you the next question. So, sure. Here we go. Um, this is it's a nice little reset, you know, yeah. talk about some real stuff and then some nonsense. It's good. Uh, you have also, that's a amazing spelling of also, if you could just see that, but um, you have also been known to have magic powers. Is it true that you have made earthquakes? You move the earth. You've made typhoons happen. How do you do these things? That's usually what God does. I don't know. You, so you're not, okay. Yeah, God likes to whack people. He's good at it. If you notice, when people beg and pray, then he does the total opposite. He will whack somebody right in front of you. Except he won't do it. He'll send one of his angels. They're hitmen. So is God more powerful than Satan? Um, this is a good tug of war between that. They're pretty, it seems like it really goes Almost back and like forth. A, but see, without me, they don't have anything to be mad about. Right. Well, so I've always believed that you know, the yin and the yin, you can't have one without the other. You oh, must yeah. have the bad because then you wouldn't know what good was or whatever. It would just be However, space. Right. However, if it was truly 50-50, mm -hmm. then you wouldn't notice either way. You'd be but, a blind spot. But bad stuff really will stick in your mind. So there must be more bad things in the oh, world yeah. than good things. Look at the president. <laughs> <laughs> Well, then, so if God is more powerful than Satan, if good is more powerful than evil, it's good. Good's a good idea, but does it actually work? So it's more of a quality versus quantity thing. There's it's just more, more just quantity like of a bad idea control issue. So you can convince people that it's real, like Santa. Have you ever seen that pudgy dude coming down your chimney? Yeah, nice idea. But is it in front of you? Is it? Can you feel it? No, it's a nice idea, but is it actually there? What well, kind of is because you do get the presents every year, so like, yeah, what's the dis that's difference? How it happens? Buying stuff, right? But they wouldn't do that if they weren't pressured by the belief of Santa Claus. Or brainwashed by media. But what? What is the media? What uh, they control a lot of people through subliminal advertising. Why? What's in it for them? More money. Or if you go to the store, then where are you going to spend? But they're already making money. They don't care. They want more of it. It's called greed. Well, you can't argue with greed. Yeah, you ever seen a broke store? A broke store? Exactly. Walmart's not broke. Target's not broke. Now, some other stores with no big name. Well, Montgomery Ward went out of business. Yeah. They, Circuit City. Yeah, they got kind of Strouds. Never Remember Strouds? Of. Never. It was like Bed Bath and Beyond. It closed about oh, ten yeah, years that ago. Place had to suck. Yeah, it wasn't. It might have stayed out there for a month yeah. or something. It went downhill. Yeah, it was. They had a couple of locations. They probably had shrewy people working there with schnoozy little shrewy attitudes. Shrewy. It's shrew. Shrew. Yeah, stuck up. Okay. Bond complexity. Bond so high it scratches her brain. Yeah, you get a few of them every now and then. Yoga pants women just you know got their yoga pants up to eye. They think they're higher than life and you can't talk to them. The only time they can talk is when they get ran over. And I find that very interesting. If you hit by a car, they're extra friendly. Have you been hit by a lot of cars? Uh, no. Twice, that's it. That, that's two times more. One lady uh -huh. got out of the ticket by uh, pushing her chest together and flirting with the porno cop. The dude looked like Ponch and John. It was funny. He checked on me. I'm sitting on the curb. She's got her chest and she's pushing them together 
and kind of walks over to the officer like, and I couldn't even try to mimic that voice, but in a flirty way, she claims I cut her off, but she's the one that ran the light. And the windshield had a big giant crash through it, literally like a circle, like a spider web. So in order for me to- on a bike, wait. Uh, yeah, 10 speed. A lot of people get hit on bikes. Well, a lot it of must people, be the driver's fault. The driver's cut around corners. Yeah. Fine. You have the give way. You know, it's your turn when you see a little green guy flashing. You got five seconds to get over there. But Miss Foo Foo in a hurry has to bust a U turn and smack into you. So, and then on top of that, where's Jesus? Uh, where's the miracle? And where's his angels? Where's the love at? Nowhere. Didn't see no lady on cloud nine flying down to come get me. Well, I think if you're, hmm. that's what you're expecting, of course oh, you're going to yeah, be just disappointed. Just curious, you know, wonder. But if you question mark it, oh no, watch out. You've got to find it though. You've got to really uh, look for the look good stuff. You're blue in the face and talking to yourself and schizophrenic. That's dismissal if you're in church because people think you're talking to God. If you're sitting in a building and you've got an open book and you've got these extra voices kicking around, no meds, schizophrenia. But everybody's like, it's the spirit. No, 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 it's schizophrenia. Just didn't label it back in the old days. Right, yeah. Got Joan of Arc. There you go. <laughs> Crazy cross dressing. Yep. <laughs> like these days, she never would have got that far. Well, nobody's going to know, you know? Mm -hmm. Who's going to know? <laughs> Right. LA, anything yeah. goes. Anything goes in LA. You, oh, okay. Just, you offered to do a sex act with Miley Cyrus on stage and sing a song with her. She had turned you down. Did you scare her? Was it Halloween? Well, she was too bony, actually. She needed some meat on her body. I needed to get some protein powder for that woman. She wasn't really acting right, so I had to go find a replacement. So you didn't do a sex act with Miley nah, Cyrus? Nah, she was too etch a sketch. You know, sketchy. You shake her around and she'll disappear. She's too bony, mm. she needs some food. And it, was it Halloween? Mm, close to it. Oh, okay. So that, that part of the question was... So you was, had to double check right. to make sure it was actually her because it could have been a lookalike. Yeah. The Hollywood makeup and whatnot. Mm -hmm. The tongue is what you check. Oh, yeah. With, uh, with Miley. Make sure it ain't alien jumping out and <laughs> that face yeah. and trying to bite you. Are, um, are God or Satan or like the religions, are they in cahoots with um, extraterrestrials to mm. control us or are they different types of control? I would say anything that has the power to create and kill is something you probably don't want to pray to. Why are you going to give it that power? You just keep it for yourself and be happy. Because if you give it that power, guess what? What if it doesn't like you? Now you're screwed. <laughs> what if it says, I'm sick of looking at you and send something to get you? Then you got to figure out how to get away from it, like an ex. Did you want to be ducking and covering your ex-girlfriend? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Duck and cover, man. <laughs> you see her in the dark, don't move. Just sit still like you're between some trees. Satan, do you work out? Oh, you have to. You I think, be. yeah. Yeah, you can't be out of shape and wear horns, you know, it's going to yeah. be terrible. You can't have a Ron Jeremy, you can't have a hairy gut and... No, yeah, you got to work out. So you, sh you shave your body oh, too? Oh, yeah. You, you don't want to be like extra hairy if you're taking pictures of tourists. Yeah. Well, it seems like they're kind of separate things, being Satan, mm -hmm. the, the tourism thing. Well, they're pretty funny. You get the play yeah. jokes on them, tie them up. You didn't always have the horns. I've seen you years ago down there with no horns. That changed over. Uh, you grew, had to grow them. Had to grow them. Yeah. Yeah. Had to grow them. Got tired of them just sitting around under my skull. Have you ever hurt your muscles lifting weights? Uh, your body tells you when to stop. See, a lot of people don't know when to stop when they're in the gym. And they sound like they're having a child. Like some people will try to impress the person next to them. They want the woman to notice them. Yeah. So they start shouting numbers they never got to. And there's always some guy who's about 5'8", and he sounds like he's having a baby on a machine. So he starts, yeah, 18, 19, 20. And he's hoping the skinny woman named Jill is checking him out. Except Jill hates dudes, and she's dressing for chicks. So that's not going to go right. And he thinks she's liking him because he's blurting out big numbers, and he's doing them wrong. So he's going to hurt all of his joints. You won't see him in the gym for about half a month because he pulled something, or he tore something, and didn't go right. Did you work out at Muscle Beach? Uh, you used to, yeah. 
a yes, long sir. time ago, but they charge you 10 a day to go in, oh. unless you're a member. Okay. But if you're a member, then you pay a fee and run around in there and become part of the circus. Mm. Right. It's a circus beach. Venice is not normal. Yes. You'd be giving it away for free at, at Muscle oh, Beach. Oh, yeah. It's like, you might as well go into the cave of Muscle Beach because they have a little corner where you can hide and do the workout, but you're not going to get the sun on you. You're going to look kind of strange in the corner. Do you Gold's Gym ever? Mm, used to. Used trainers, to. they're yeah. crybabies. Okay. They only like you when you're out of shape. Oh. If you're out of, if you're out of shape, they love you because then they don't feel threatened. But the minute you get in shape, their clientele start asking you, hey, how do you get your leg to look like that? How do you get your arm to look like that? And the trainers in the background start sticking their head out literally like an ostrich to see what they're asking you because they're threatened that you're giving out free info and they're getting paid so they think you're still their customer. Mm -hmm. And your brain is not even on that person. You're just mm -hmm. doing, like, hey, yeah, do 10 this way, do 10 that way. And then you got a trainer such and such with a power trip having a moment thinking you're still their customer. They tell management on you. So then you get management following you around the gym like a, a wannabe detective. So then you got to drink some fat burners so you can ditch management. Because management can't run around the gym because they're not in shape. So it's kind of funny. You had to drink some red line and run around the gym and you got to try to do your whole body within an hour. Most people can't do that. But if you train yourself a certain way, you can. I call it ditch and juice. You drink that and you ditch people that don't act right. It sounds a lot like religion. Oh, hell yeah. The way you, you phrase that out. So I'm not sure I can believe all these things you were telling me, but uh, do you have any witnesses that can bring you on stage? Maybe three people, Kathy, Karen, the witnesses oh, yeah. of Satan? Well, let's bring out the witnesses right now. This is Satan's girlfriend, Kathy. How you doing? Good. Hey, good to see you. you. I'm doing great. Um, so, uh, you know, is, is he really the Prince of Darkness? Does, Absolutely. Is, have you been listening to the interview? Is it pretty accurate, all the stuff he's been saying? That's a mirror all the way. A mirror. <laughs> Whoops. A mirror's real name. Prince of Darkness. Satan's real name is a mirror. <laughs> hmm. He's Prince and Arabic, so it's all right. Oh, okay, as long as you're doing the, the Prince kind of stuff. Yeah. That's good. Karen, did you have anything you wanted to say there? To, oh, just talk to them. Okay. How'd you meet Karen Centerfold? Oh, That's wow. a question That's I always like to. A liked. long time ago at the beach. Uh, to the mic. Way back when. Let me see now. I think it was on the weekend at the drum circle, seeing Karen uh, playing some drums and singing or something. And I was in the middle of uh, catching some pigeons and throwing my people talking shit. Yeah. Huh. But it was yeah. fun. Yeah. Everyone who's friends with Karen kind of has that same story. I don't know, I met her, but we're still friends. How'd you two meet? Mm. Venice Beach? Do you want to tell the story? I'll let you. <laughs> He's going to let me tell the story? <laughs> I was hanging out that day at Venice like I <clears throat> often do, and I was in the line for the ladies' room. Such a romantic story. And here he is in front of me, chatting with me. And before I knew it, I was in the sand with him, letting him give me a massage. <laughs> so it was kind of like a love, love with first sight kind of thing? Yeah. <laughs> For him. Maybe, maybe at second sight. What's that, Karen? Uh, do either of you lie, steal, and kill? Mm. Oh, absolutely. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, me too. Yeah, you know, just how ministers do it. They do the same yeah, thing, they're just a little bad. different. Do you lie, steal, and kill? Absolutely. For you? <laughs> well, that's probably the secret to happiness, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what, what, Karen? Oh, oh we got another uh, guy coming out. I guess out. the guy in the back room. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, thanks, Kathy, everybody. Thanks for coming out. Oh, we got another... Um, yeah, you hey, Another yeah. unfortunate guy I've been uh, roped into this by Karen Centerfold, oh, so oh, thanks oh. for... I have a few things to say. Okay, here, we'll use the All microphone right. there. Yeah. This guy is full of crap. I mean, I see him around on the beach. Uh, honestly, he seems like a pretty cool guy, but it's full of crap. Do you have anything to say to that? I yeah, mean, you know, the girls... The girls... Yeah, 
they give you a lot of money to take pictures with you and, and down at the beach. But, you know, I'm not really with the whole, like, having sex with 18-year-olds in front of 75 people under the cover of darkness in Woodland Hills. You know what I mean? You seem like a nice guy, but do you have anything to say to, to this? Uh, you gotta live for yourself and not other people. Mm. Shit. <laughs> That's what it is. Oh, yeah. But, you know, um, if you are living for yourself, because we, we're, we're almost out of time, but I do want to get to some of these. Um, and I know, Satan, you, you know, you've been doing this a long time. Uh, you obviously have a worldview that's very laid out. You probably have an answer for everything, as, as anybody who, who, who espouses knowledge should. But um, what, 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 Karen? What do you want? I Karen Sinifold, ladies and gentlemen. I want to say that the prince of darkness, Satan rules over so many people and their lives and this earth with his powers of extremity. And his powers of extremity come from the bowels of hell and righteousness where he has come to serve all of humanity for its purposes of pleasure lust, fortitude, fertility, for righteousness, and all that who will obey him and become subservient unto his strength, unto his will, unto his children, and unto him. And Satan does rule. You know it. <laughs> Pretty ringing endorsement. Definitely. <laughs> hey, what's up with that gravelly Satan voice? <laughs> now that's something uh, most people can't do because they don't have it in them. <laughs> you know, if I could be honest with you, I kind of like the twangy southern accent for Satan. Yeah, it was a lot better of than stuff. the, better than the that old voice. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> well, Satan and uh, maybe Karen can speak to this too. I do have one final question. So, if you are living for yourself and you don't want any people people to control you and you don't want to follow all those rules you know, that organized religion puts out. If you are living for yourself, at a certain point, purely selfishly, you are going to need other people. You're going to need friendships. You're going to need business relationships. You're going to need you know, romantic companionship. All of this stuff. So don't you think that you know, if you truly want to live for yourself, you have to also kind of be altruistic and do things to bring people in? Depends. Um, he, he, I mean, I mean, I've seen him do it. I've seen him do it, and I've seen him on uh, all these beaches where um, these ladies from Miami hand him fifty dollars, like hundreds, you know. Um, and um, he gets photographed with all these ladies, and uh, it's such a good thing. And um, and he created his own, uh, you know, personality and persona, except for. When he did the candlelight vigil um, in front of all these people, they were really quiet, very quiet when he had sex with this girl and he hurt this girl, you know, and she was, she was like um, in pain, but um, she wanted it, you know, and his, um, he's got a lot of fans and so on, okay. and um, he's got a lot of opportunities. Can we get you to get up for a second for the ladies at home? Stand up for a second. Okay, now stand right, up. We'll just really have Satan stand up straight, up. Satan. Now flex your biceps really hard, just like Arnold Schwarzenegger would do. Both of them. Can, can I get it on it? this too? Yeah, you got to roll your sleeves up. Adam, right, yeah. Yeah. Please, Adam. That's there you cool. go. Yeah, Satan wants me to right. do that. So. Yeah, right okay. There, cool. Sure. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Cool. Sorry for a little bit. Well, hey, thank you all for tuning in. We're just about out of time. Thank you, Satan, yeah, for coming on. Okay, flex your muscles, uh, Satan. Flex your muscles. Thank you all for tuning yeah, in. That's sure. it. Sure. That's, that's it. it. All right. There you go. Yeah. All right. Now flex Until your muscles. Until next time. Come on. This is no, no, no. Flex them Adam up. That's again. it. That's it. Wow. And that is awesome. Okay, everybody. Until next time. Good one. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> and she left for what she had to me I don't feel all that much better anyway 
Don't feel all that much better anyway Don't feel all that much better anyway I've lived a whole lot of years When I look at this world I don't feel all that